am Nira Jarora, Director of uh, Cloud Computing for Cisco Consulting Services for Asia Pacific, Japan, and China. Cloud computing, as you know, is one of the key drivers that is impacting the overall delivery mechanisms for IT services. It's leading to a full transform, new transformation overall. And today I'm extremely excited to share with you the findings of our recent survey that we conducted along with our strategic partner, Intel. This survey was conducted in nine countries, including India and China, with about 4,200 odd decision makers, including about 600 from India. Very interesting findings that came out, happy to share it with you. But overall, our sense is that cloud plays an important role in connecting the dots when it comes to the overall Internet of Everything. Internet of Everything is going to be the key driver for uh, the next cusp of uh, innovation, if you will, transformation, if you will, for Internet. Over the last few decades, we have seen Internet driving the number of connected devices from, say, 200 million in 2000, going up to 10 billion devices now, but the future is really going to be over the next 10 years when we see the number of devices to exceed 50 billion. And cloud, we feel, is going to be the key delivery mechanism for the Internet of Everything. It's going to connect not just devices, but then also people, process, and data. As regards to specific findings of this survey, we, we looked into how cloud is getting consumed, not just in India, but in China, as well as developed economies. As regards the key business drivers, from India perspective, our sense is that improving the IT experience from cloud for the end users is paramount. As opposed to the driver in more developed countries where it was more around lowering the costs. Surprisingly for us, one of the key drivers for cloud adoption also came to enhancing security and risk management, which typically you'd expect to be a major driver because data protection, security, uh, many people have concerns around how secure they are on cloud. So from our perspective, actually, the survey threw, threw the result that adoption of cloud is leading to greater security and risk management awareness and therefore investment from the enterprises. As regards the key barriers, Again, in India, existing investments enterprises have done is really the key driver or a barrier at this point in time. Investments in legacy platforms. So what enterprises are looking into is how can you really help leverage my existing IT investments, legacy investments, and help transform to an overall IT as a service enterprise. By that we mean getting into more of virtualization, consolidation of different platforms, but then also getting into private cloud, hybrid cloud, and overall market mechanism, if you will, uh, of different clouds, the world of many clouds, if you will. So that's really the key inhibitor from our perspective. How do you leverage the different legacy platforms? I just want to highlight how the overall cloud is kind of impacting the different life cycle stages from IT consumption point of view. Specifically from the planning perspective, we feel that cloud is changing the overall IT model to become more of an IT as a broker, if you will. IT as a service provider, if you will. Around 93% of our respondents in India for the survey mentioned that IT as a broker is a key driver for them in terms of seeing the change that they are seeing in the IT planning process. This is significant because earlier, IT was being considered as more like a custodian, but now we are moving more towards a broker relationship, a service relationship, wherein they are working closely with the business in defining what those business services may be. What would it take to standardize some of those business services, IT services, and then what does it mean in terms of chargebacks or usebacks for, from the, for those services? So this is from the IT planning perspective. When it comes to the procurement and deployment, automation and integration becomes increasingly important. As I mentioned, we are seeing the world of many clouds. We are seeing enterprises that have their own IT shops, they have outsourced, they are also using private cloud, public clouds, hybrid clouds. How do you really manage all of this complexity is becoming a key ask. So integration and automation becomes key from a cloud consumption point of view as well. I just wanted to talk a bit more about uh, how all of this is kind of coming coming together 
based on the consumption that is happening from the corporate IT perspective, but then also from the LOV related spend. What we find is that uh, there is a significant increase in LOV related IT spend. What this begs to is several challenges that the corporate IT, the CIO function is facing. So top three challenges from Indian CIO's perspective, more complex IT support requirements. Seeing the world of many clouds, how can I really manage all of this complexity? How can I really integrate all of this uh, complexity, complex environments, if you will? Second, more in terms of putting more pressure to cut costs. LOBs are putting pressure, the CEOs are putting pressure, CFOs are putting pressure. How can I reduce my overall costs, if you will? And then finally, greater expectations in terms of value the IT generates, the CIO being a value-driven entity as opposed to a cost entity, if you will. Those are the three key challenges that we are seeing from the CIO perspective. So what does a CIO really need to do? Our survey respondents basically highlighted three key drivers or the hallmarks for a successful IT leader, if you will. First, ability to align the IT strategy with the business priorities. Again, this becomes important because a lot of discretionary IT spend, non-discretionary IT spend, which gets consumed in the LOBs as shadow, B, shadow IT spend, uh, is getting into the purview of the corporate IT as well. Corporate IT is looking for ways to minimize this complexity. LOBs themselves are looking at ways to minimize this complexity. Corporate IT is looking at ways to leverage these investments across many other functions as well, not just specific to that shadow IT shadow at IT uh, spend that the LOB did. So how do you really manage all of that? It requires for management a CIO to have greater understanding and appreciation of the specific business priorities. So that's one. Second, from the point of view of understanding the emerging technologies, what really are the new technologies on the horizon and how can they really help me get closer onto the business agenda? be it from the point of view of not just cloud, which is a delivery mechanism as I was suggesting for Internet of Everything, but then also from the point of view of collaboration technologies, mobility, video, from the point of view of analytics, security, and other next generation IT technologies. How can I really make sense out of it? How can I make it, make it more meaningful for my business audience? And finally, uh, uh, table stake really is from the point of view of having a technical, strong technical background from the IT perspective. That is really a given, if you will. So those were the three key requirements a successful IT leader must have. What is implication therefore? Implication therefore is from the point of view of again three aspects. First, value driven. The IT department as well as the CIO have to be more value driven, be it from the point of view of impacting the top line or the bottom line, enabling greater innovation or faster time to market. They really need to identify how can they really deliver that kind of value? Second, collaboration. Collaboration with business becomes increasingly important as enterprises are thinking of themselves uh, becoming more IT as a service. Corporate IT is thinking of themselves becoming more IT as a service. So collaboration, understanding those needs for business services, getting them quickly into the system, creating a standardized catalog, doing financial chargebacks, usebacks for them, for the different lines of business, becomes increasingly important. And finally, in terms of fostering innovation, not just from the point of view of launching new IT technologies, but more from the point of view of enabling or leveraging those technologies to launch new services into the market. That is becoming increasingly important as well. So these were the three, uh, a few key findings from the survey that we conducted. From Cisco uh, point of view and Cisco Consulting Services specifically point of view, we are working with the largest enterprises as well as cloud providers. We are working with the enterprises to make them more ITAS ready, IT as a service ready, but then also working with the cloud providers in terms of helping them with the new market entry strategies. How can they launch new services? What could be the revenues for those services? And then from the go-to-market perspective, how can they can how can they really take some of those services to the market? So those are the two key areas where Cisco Consulting Services and specifically Cloud Practice is working with the service with the enterprises and service providers across the region. To tap it, we have the strong backing from our 
cloud infrastructure. So we are, uh, from Cisco point of view, have been rated the number one cloud equipment provider by Synergy that helps in uh, providing an end-to-end -end service to our consumers, not just the equipment, but then also services, be it from planning perspective, which is what Cisco Consulting Services uh, provides, but then also from the point of view of building and managing that service on an ongoing basis.